Hey Scotty, I just finished cooking some beans and I'm ready to rewatch the Call of Trinity. You wanna join me? Ooh, that's much better. I guess some spaghetti western could wait a little bit. Why not? Hello everyone and welcome to another one of our little Easy Swim deck reviews. This series where Scotty and I take the time to go through precon decks, read out the cards inside, give you an idea of how strong they are and if they synergize with given commander, the cut soldier deck and how good the products are straight out of the box. At we end. At the end, we score each deck inside of an expansion against each other out of 10. So grab your favorite drink, sit down, lay back and relax as we dive into this review today. I am your host Vlad, this is Scotty, thank you very much Scotty for that wonderful introduction and we are taking a look at the first of the Avalos' Underjunction Commander decks. This is the Quick Draw deck, it's an easy deck, so that's gonna be interesting. As usual it contains a sample booster pack with two special cards um, with the showcase versions and then you'll have the 100 card deck with only 10 new cards so this is two less than the murderous account of manner then we have a deck box the 10 double-sided token cards and the life wheel a strategy insert and the reference card so that's it now it is going to be a really cool one because for the first time they've actually put a full art um borderless card as the commander right inside of the pack so you don't need to buy any collector specific versions the commanders come out straight up like that so as we dive into here i hope you're having a wonderful day and that you're enjoying this expansion as much as we are the master blaster spellcaster say that five times real quick and uh, yeah we are a little bit behind with our recordings and that's why because we've made our own uk exclusive car marketplace so if you want to trade buy or sell any of the cars that you see here you'll be able to do so from our users on our website at very friendly uk i'll leave a link in the description down below and here we go the contents of this wonderful little box are as follows you get the deck box which is always good if you're not gonna sleeve the deck you get the life wheel which they gone back again with just like the previous expansion that you don't have a, an illustration over it anymore and then you have the sample collector booster pack and then you have here some cutout and on the front some more cutouts and inside you'll be able to find oh that was sealed that was nice you'll be able to find the deck and the reference sheet and that's about it so let's have a look a little bit at the reference sheet as usual these are quite nice because it gives you a little bit of well lore about the commander here is going to be steadily wild card and a little bit of a description of why the deck was created how it was thought up and so on and so forth you can pause at any one point should you want to read this but i find this always very nice especially if you're a lore buff so that's quite quite nice and uh, then we shall dive in right away into the collector booster sample as you get actually three cards one's going to be a token card and two are going to be any of the special versions of this expansion usually there's an uncommon and then a rare or a mythic and um, any of the possible kind so here you have seven smash and the foil and the breaking news and tiny bones pickpocket yay and the beautiful wanted version this is a wonderful little card really happy to get this one really 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 nice very lucky pool there uh, i think it's one of the better ones that you can get at the moment because uh, it's seeing some play and pioneer as well so further on we shall go on to the deck and as we said initially we look at the deck with the given commander this is how we're going to score the cards how synergistic they are how sensical they are into the deck and if i can find the pool tab which uh, i think is non-existent at the moment so if the cards inside the deck are going to synergize really well together with the commander i is given then we're going to score higher if not lower and uh, of course there's a, a myriad of things that you can do with a commander deck but this is all scored against each other precon so give me a sec while i unbox this <laughs> Oh, thing because if the pool tab is not outlined it's really annoying so we'll have a look at the oh yay wanted you have a way to play as well all right because if i'm not mistaken they also made an event in your lgs's where you could go in and have an extra type of way to play commander with these decks and you have the extra rules here so that's really really cool and then you have the bounty here that's really nice so each deck comes with these extra cards that's nice and the 
then you'll get the double-sided tokens as usual. Some elemental, some dragon elemental with prowess and flying. That's insane. Some treasure, some soldiers, some birdie bird. Ooh, yay, the shark. I love the shark. Yay. Okay, so that's great. And we'll continue on cracking. So let's see here. Our commander is going to be Stella Lee Wildcard. And I'm going to be seeing it. I love these decks because they went and put the borderless version of the commander. It makes it feel so special. If you love a specific commander, you get a beautiful borderless art. Not to take away from the normal versions, but I just find borderless art beautiful. And it's foil as well. So that's really wonderful. So now let's see what the Stella Lee does. She's is it and only costs three. So easy to cast. She's a human rogue. So has the whole outlaw theme as well in case you need her for being an outlaw then yeah it's a two four and whenever you cast your second spell each turn exile the top card of your library until the end of your next turn you may play this card and for tapping this creature copy target instant sorcery spell you control you may choose new targets for the copy activate this only if you cast three or more spells this storm so this is going to be very much a storm deck how many cards can you cast how many spells can you cast in one turn and how many times you can copy the better ones that's going to be insanely good how can you untap this commander that's going to be also very powerful and of course the fact that the second spell also triggers an exile so it gets you to draw and remember you exile always face up unless it's stated on the card so you exile the card and then you can play until your end of your next turn so you still get a lot and it's um, very likely that you're gonna have instance as well to do that so you get to do more and more and more so that's great and i like this commander i think this is a really strong commander if done correctly now let's see what's the general of this this is eris roar of the storm this is an elemental warlock that's a 4-4 that costs whoa a whooping 10 wow and it dispelled cost two generic elastic ads for each different mana value among instant sorcery cards in your graveyard so if you have i don't know a, a two cost instant and a three cost sorcery that's already four or less making it cost six so it's not gonna be too tough to drop it down to four um necessarily of course the sweet spot is it costing this at too but you know hell <laughs> and then it has flying and prowess so prowess is gonna be really key in this deck because you want to be casting so many spells per turn and the slick shot um i don't remember the the the, the flying bird the prowess slick shot is gonna be really 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 good um to play and this deck as well and whenever you cast your second spell each turn you get to create a 4-4 red dragon elemental creature token with flying and prowess which is insane those are the elemental tokens that we saw earlier now um be careful because this also says each turn so you can play an opponent's turn and that's going to be insanely strong so synergy is right there so prowess is going to be great cast as many spells as you want storm it out copy those spells and yeah there you go and uh, this is a little bit of a reference card and let's dive into the deck we have another bounty that i missed at the beginning i'm so sorry there you go and we'll start with Archmage Emeritus. So this is a human wizard. As a 2-2 two -two that costs 4, has Magecraft. Whenever you cast or copy on instant or sorcery spell, you get to draw a card. So that's going to be great. And it is very synergistic with the deck. The more you cast, the more you do, and um, the more you draw. That's also very nice. And this is whenever, so it doesn't limit it to only one per turn. Then we have Barrel's Expertise. Cost 5 sorcery. Turn up to 3 target artifacts and or creatures to their own hand, so it's a bounce mouse bounce and you may cast a spell with mana value four or less from your hand without paying its mana cost which is great because in the end you get a bounce and you get a two for one or a three for one depending on the spell you cast and it allows you to cast more spells and again the the key here is cast because here it is when you copy it right the second part is copy target it's not casting it's just copying it so casting it is the key part of this deck but that's really really good and it is synergistic then we have tezrit's gambit so it costs three and one for x in blue and draw two cards then you get to proliferate this is gonna be a mm, bit of a lance um i see why you might want to 
play this, but at the moment, I'd say this is not a synergistic. Then we have the Midnight Clock, which is an encounter um, worthy artifact. So it costs three, and you tap to add one blue, and then for three, you put an hour counter on it. And at the beginning of your upkeep, you put an hour counter on it, and then whenever you have 12 counters on it, you shuffle your hand, graveyard into your library, draw seven cards, and you exile this. Not a great card necessarily. It's, uh, well, your own time twist. But um, the, the the issue with us is that you're working off of counters, and I don't really see the point of proliferating counters in this kind of deck. So I don't think that's necessarily something you want to keep. Then we have Haughty Gen. It's a star four gen that costs three, has flying, and its power is equal to the number of instant sorcery cards in the graveyard. Very good. Instant sorcery spells cost one gen last to cost. Very good. Keep it absolutely wonderful. Dig through time. Nice. With Delve. Keep in mind though that with Delve, you do kick out Eris and cards like this one. Um, so you buff it down basically, or it depowers those ones. But with Delve, you exile cards from a graveyard while casting the spell. Pay one generic towards the cost of the spell and then with this when you look at the top seven cards of your library put two of them into your hand the rest at the bottom of your library in any order this is a very very strong card i see why you do it but you got to be careful you don't you shouldn't have too many of these effects that um remove too many instants or sorcerers from your graveyard if you're playing with flashbacks if you're playing with snapcaster mages if you're playing with anything that is interested in what things you have and the graveyard you got to be careful with those ones right so next we have wing boots it's an artifact equipment that costs two a quick creature has flying in war four and you can equip it for one that's not bad i think it, the war four and flying is really, really good this is great for those creatures that want to deal damage to your opponent's face the war four is a great protection to a certain degree but there are still you know ways to get around that so it's a good protection if you need protection otherwise don't keep it then we have tolerance sky summoner merfolk wizard legendary creature is a 2-2 that costs four whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell you get to create a 2-2 blue drake creature token with flying very good you can really synergize with this one and it's a synergy adjacent but it is very very strong in this kind of deck storm decks especially octavia living thesis this is an 8-8 elemental octopus that costs a whooping tan it's a legendary creature. It spells cost a generic less to cast if you have eight or more instant sorcery cards in graveyard. Case in point for the dig through time has ward eight and has magecraft. Whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, target creature has base power and toughness eight eight until the end of turn. And of course, if you have a flyer prowess or just any flyers that's going to be strong now again if you're playing many of these cards then don't play too much of dig through time or stuff that removes from graveyard otherwise yeah it's really synergistic it's a ward eight it is still blocked by a simple you know one one but the fact that it makes a creature that has flying or whatever other creature you want uh, into a base eight eight that's insane then we have turn the club drake so two one drake cost two has flying instant sources spell you cast costs one generic to cast extremely good and then for two and a one blue, sacrifice it when you cast your next instance and sorcery spell. Um, this turn, copy it for each time you've cast your commander for command from the command zone this game. So that's really, really nice because that will use a cheap one as well at that. This is going to be synergistic and you get to copy it each time you cast your command. So you cast your command at least three times in a game, then you copy it three times and you just pay uh, the cost of that. And that is really synergistic and I like that. It's multitude of things that you can do with it. Lock and load as sorcery costs three. You can plot it for four, draw a card, and then draw a card for each other instance or spell you've cast this turn so it's kind of like a storm adjacent draw very very strong way to draw and i prefer this over tezra's gambit then we have this forges foundry which is another one of those cards that we saw with our collector booster unboxing and so the first allows you to um, pay one blue we use it to cast sorcery or instant spells that are three by nine value or last and then for five but you exile those ones so those instead of going to grave as are exiled and then for five you tap it you may cast any number of spells from among the cards exiled with the foundry without paying their mana cost and so this just continuously just ramps up 
and that's so strong that's gonna be so strong finale of revelation of course it's sorcery x and two blue pips draw x cards if x is 10 or more instead shuffle your graveyard into your library draw x cards on top up to five lands and if you have no maximum and you have no maximum hand size for the rest of the game exile this card i don't see the reason of having this there are better draw ways into blue and we don't want to go too much into the heavy casting cost we want to go into the cheap part to be able to prowess to be able to just get more and more spells into the turn so that's something that i would remove especially because it's a really expensive sorcery then we have curse of the swine which is a sorcery with x and two exile x target creature for each creature exile this way it's control it creates a two two green boar creature token so this is a um, not a bad removal it's not the greatest one of them all but it's something and at least it gives you some way of removing things so this is the first of the removals is it synergistic not really but hey oh if you don't have any better removal keep it otherwise remove it then we have mizx mastery cost four a sorcery it's red exile target card from, that's an instant or sorcery from your graveyard for each card exile this way you get to copy it and you may cast that copy without paying its mana cost exile mrs mastery and you get to overload saying that any target becomes each this is insane insane strong this is kind of a mana opus of the deck at the end chaos warp it's a classic i don't really like using chaos warp too much myself but but hey, oh, if you if you really necessarily love it, doesn't keep it in. Otherwise, I would replace it with something better. Then we have Crackling Spell. So it's a two-two human wizard. It costs five, has flash whenever it enters battlefield. If you cast it, the next instant resource spell you cast this turn has storm, which means that when you cast a spell, you copy it for each spell cast before the turn. You may choose new targets for these copies. So great little one. I'm a little worried on the instant side. I hope we're gonna get um, a bit more synergy on the instant side, especially for damage spell, because that's the spells that you want to be copying you want to burn you want to do so many things you want to copy your opponent's creatures you want to do so much and you don't want to be restricted to just a few things now we have periodic charge is a sorcery that costs five discard your hand and draw four cards for each card discard it this way creatures you control get plus one plus zero until the end of turn and you can plot it not a great card not something that i would necessarily use in this deck it can be strong but it's not really um a super alpha strike because it doesn't get any trample it doesn't even get any flying anything like that that is going to make it worse something um it's just a damage spell but realistically it's okay for the plot part that could that's basically something that allows you to cast it for free ish in one turn smoldering stage goes it's um star five vehicle artifact that costs four and its power is equal to the number of instant sources spell cards in the graveyard again mindful of that and whenever it attacks the next instant sorcery spell you cast this turn each have cascades so for the next instant and sorceries they have cascade and then you can crew for two that's very very nice and it is synergistic i think it is good i would keep it and we get elemental eruption it costs six this is sorcery you get to create a four four red dragon elemental creature token with flying prowess and it has storm and with the fact that it's a sorcery with all of those creatures that allow you for instance and sorceries to cost one less this is a keep but only if you do that or if you have ways to easily ramp into this but you gotta remember you're gonna have be casting six plus any other spells that you cast the turn so either you plotted a lot of spells or this is not gonna be as strong as you think but still that token is insanely strong even if you cast one off so that's really good then we have rousing refrain it's a sorcery cost five and one red mana for each card in target opponent's hand until the end of turn you do not lose this mana as steps and phases and then you get to exile ex rousing refrain with three times counter on it and it's also a suspend card so this is another great little card and it allows you to ramp at a specific time you can build up to it with some plot cards and then just go crazy bananas i really like that and not bad in this deck at all then we have cursed mirror it's an artifact cost three that's red and tap to add one red and ask if mirror enters the battlefield you may have it become a copy of any target creature on the battlefield until the end of turn except that it has haze so it's a mana rock that also clones for one turn it's not bad i don't believe this is really thematically proper and nor is it strong enough to keep into this deck there are better things you can do and there are better mana rocks that you will definitely need if you want to ramp so that 
is something to keep in mind. Then we have Bloodthirsty Adversary. A great vampire is a 2-2 that costs 2 is uh, red. It has haste. When it enters the battlefield, you may pay 3 any number of times. You may pay this cost 1 or more times. Put that many plus 1 plus 1 counter on it. And then exile up to that many target instant sorcery cards with mana value 3 or less from Graver and copy them. You may cast any number of the copies without paying their mana cost. So this is why I was referencing the fact that at the moment, I don't see a lot of instant that costs very little so at the moment the cost and average cost i think is is quite 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 high that's why i would build this deck a little bit on the lower end more so than the higher hand which is where they're going at the moment because cards like this snapcaster mage the slick shot as well that allows you to recast you know do more with the cards in your graveyard and allows you to just just get more out of it but it is a very synergistic card so we'll keep it there then we have finale of promise sorcery x and two red pips you may cast up to one target instant card and or up to one target sorcery card from your graveyard with each with mana value x or less without paying their mana cost if a spell cast this way it will be put in graveyard you exile and instead if x or is 10 or more copy each of those spells twice you may choose new targets of this copy so again on the bigger end you want to cast it for the big bang with the finale for for 10 um so it's 12 in total i don't really know that i will keep this it is good one off but don't have so many of these big ones that it's gonna make you really annoyingly well just gonna be really annoying no arcane barbarman this is a bit more expensive but i think if if i'm not mistaken this is a, a better one it's an enchantment cost six we have recast your first spell which is an instant of sorcery each turn you exile an instant of sorcery card at random from your graveyard then copy each card exiled with arcane bombardment you may cast any number of the copies without paying their mana cost so this this is insanely good in this tank again we're going in the very high end this is the first enchantment as well so we're going in the very high end here and we only have one card that ramps us in there and um it's a shame because you know red and blue are colors that have really cheap really good cards that are instant sorceries that could really help you get there whether it's draw whether it's cry whether it's bounce whether it's burn there are so many things that you can do here um that i don't just don't see they're gone the the heavy way so far but we still have a little bit to go so maybe the change in the long run niv is a Perun, the original niv is a 5-5 dragon wizard that costs six is it colors this spell can be countered it has flying whenever you draw a card it deals one damage to any target and whenever a player casts an instant or source of spell you draw a card so um yeah tail end very big creature it's really annoying it's a fun creature to play with not really synergistic with a commander though and this is the first one that's not really synergistic because yes you can draw a card but it's again on the tail end of this is more a commander than we will see there it's not non-synergistic at all it's just not very synergistic and to get to this point where you cast a six caster for a five five it takes a while to build up that's why i'm putting it let's say in the middle it's it's there but not really and on top of that the first ability um is not going to trigger that much because you need to have those small spells that we're talking about and so far there aren't many so because of that maybe there are better cards than this one if you don't have them just keep it in kaza royal chaser it is a one two human wizard cost is it flying haste and then tap the next instant source spell you cast this turn cost x less to cast where x is the number of wizards you control as this ability resolves so so far let's see we have perun and then we have the crackling spell slinger and then we have the tolerant and Archmage. So there are quite a few uh, wizards and not the commander in the general though. So this could, depending on how you build it, could be synergistic for sure uh, because it allows you to free cast. Ooh, Shark Typhoon. I love this card, Shark Typhoon. So this is a great, great little enchantment. It costs six, it's blue. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, you get to create an XX blue shark token with flying where X is the spell mana value and you cycle it as well for x and two so in commander it's more likely that you're going to play as an as an enchantment that allows you to do the things that you need to do but usually in constructed in other formats you would just try and cycle it as much as possible when you cycle it create an xx blue shark creature token with flying so um, 
either way, it's a great little card. I really, really love this one. And I would keep it more as an enchantment. Don't cycle it because in this kind of deck, it really can make or break and make your army. And we have a Galvanic Iteration. It's an instant. It's, it's a whenever you cast your next instant or sorcery spell this turn, copy the spell. You may choose new targets for the copy and you can flash back it. Very, very, very nice. Very nice. And I like this. And finally, some, some more decent instants. That's the first one that's lower cost and the like epic experiment. That is an X and two again. Exile the top X cards of your library. You may cast an instant or sorcery spell with mana value X or less from among them without paying their mana cost. Then put all cards exile this way. Then when cast into your graveyard so a lot of trade-offs if you're going to be able to play from graveyard then great this is good keep it in if not then i would remove it and again it's an x cost so again you're not really storming that well on this side then we have varan voice of duality is a 2-2 ifrit wizard so it's synergistic with kaza and it costs three has mage crap whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, Viren, Voice of Duality, gets plus one, plus one until the end of turn, so it becomes a three, three, or four, four, etc. If you're casting or copying an instant or sorcery spell causes a triggered ability of a permanent control to trigger, that ability triggers an di additional time, which means that this twice cast that. So this is synergistic with the theme of the deck. It can grow up to be really big, but it is a creature that doesn't have any flying, so you need to give it some evasiveness. Of course, there are evasive cards, like we said, the wing boots, but the problem is, are we really wanting to build it that way? If so, it's not a bad card to keep, and either way, I think I would keep it because it's something that it's not expensive, and it can grow up to be really big and just really annoying. Then we have Leyline Dozer. It is an artifact. It costs to use generic and for one generic and top mill card you may put an instant or sorcery card mill this way into your hand and then tap and untap legendary creature you control to, to untap the dozer i don't know that this is a bad card in the end it allows you to get to those mill cards earlier the problem is it would rather be any card from the graveyard would be better um rather than just that uh so yeah it really is um you know situational and i don't like too much of a situational card so keep that in mind when deciding if you want then we start seeing some of the lands it's nice to see the shivan reef that's good so for fours as well that's really really nice then we start seeing the usuals and we have treasure cruise another delve card draw three cards again i am going to warn you do not play too many delve cards if you're going the way of looking at how many cards you have in your graveyard because this is going to punish you in the long run they are great cards absolutely but you have to balance out the deck and there are so many better ways in blue to draw that can synergize with the storm part of the deck and the counts and cast and it's another really expensive sorcery and it's not even a freaking one that you can play in your opponent's turn because it's a sorcery so anyway we have preordain there you go finally someone listen to me it's a scry too then draw a card for one there you go that's what you want ponder another great one look at the top three cards of the library then you may put them back in any order you may shuffle and you draw a card there you go another great one so this is more the way that i would build it and less of the delve cards then we have murmuring mystic it's a one five human wizard that costs four and whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell you create a 1-1 one, one bluebird illusion creature with token with flying this is a bit expensive for it does this is on the lower end and it is synergistic but if you have better cards then do those now deep analysis this is one of those cards that if you're milling yourself is better uh or yes you can just replay it for flashback like a player draws two cards and you can flashback it um again there are better cards in blue. Don't play too much out of your graveyard unless absolutely necessary. If you don't have them, then great. Use it. Radical idea. Similar thing. Draw a card for two, and then you can jump start it. You may cast this card from graveyard by this card. And a card in addition to paying this other cost, then excel this card. So again, depends on really do you want to be playing out of your graveyard or not. Then we have opt. Great one. That's an instant. Scry one. Draw a card. That is good. That's you keep absolutely. Think twice. Another draw card. Then you can flashback and there you go i would keep more of these ones for sure arcane denial great one you draw a card and you counter target spell and uh, yes this control 
it may drop to two cards, but this is a great little card and I like to keep it. And it allows you to do two for one. And then we have Terramander, a flyer, Salamander Drake that costs one and it's a one, one, four, eight. You can adapt it. And this ability costs one generic class to activate for each instant sorcery card in your graveyard. And if the creature has no plus one, plus one counters on it, you get to put pl four plus one, plus one counters on it. Again, not on the strong end. Is this synergistic? Yes, but I would definitely change Vanda Blast. Very good card. <laughs> it's a commander classic. It's been bumped down to uncommon significantly, but yeah, it's one of those things that it's not bad to have if you want it. And it's a one coster, so you can always just cast it for that one cost. And Pongify, <laughs> that's a great one. Destroy target creature. It can be regenerated. Its control creates a 3-3 three, three green ape <laughs> creature token. So that's a good interaction. Serum Visions, great little one. Uh, now we're getting to the part. Like I said, these are the cards that you want. The lower cost ones more so than the bigger ones. Faithless, Looting. You draw two cards, then it's card two cards, and you can flash back it. Very, very good. Big score. Very, very good card to put as initial cost to cast the spell. This card Card, you draw two cards, create two shadows tokens. Very nice. It allows you to bump into an even bigger cast next turn or whenever you need it. Storm Kill Artist is a 2 2 dwarf shaman, cost four. It gets plus one plus zero for each artifact you control. And whenever you cast a copy, an instant sorcery spell, you create a treasure token. So Again, one of those ones that buffs itself up, doesn't really buff uh, the opponents. I will keep one, but not two of them. Yes, it's synergistic, but not that strong as other cards have been. Then we have Young Power Master, it's a 2-1 human shame, and it costs two whenever you cast an instant source you spell, you get to create a 1-1 one, one red elemental creature token. This I like more, it puts bodies on the board, so it, rather than buffing itself, it just puts more onto the board. And yes, it is synergistic with the deck. Electrostatic Field, 0-4 wall, and it costs two, it's defender, and if you cast, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, it deals one damage to each opponent. Eh, I mean, it's, it's good, it's good, it's good to continuously deal damage and you will need more damage spells to make it worth something and also i would like to point out you don't have a lot of bodies that um yeah make you i don't know go wide or something like that you have a little bit that makes stuff cheaper so far you have some that create tokens i think that's about two of them or and some that buff themselves up um with the spells that you've cast but if you're not doing the game properly so if you're not able for whatever reason to keep casting 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 then your side of the board looks like it's gonna be more depowered um than overall it would be in other decks so keep that in mind now we have the gutter snap goblin shaman is a 2-2 two -two that costs three whenever you cast an instant source the spell it deals two damage to each opponent now this i like very nice this in the electro study field and there are some cards as well uh, there's an enchantment in the lord of the rings set that whenever you cast an instant sorcery spell you deal damage um so if you put that together with a storm deck then it's going to be really strong then we have volcanic torrent sorcery cost five has cascade and deals x damage to each creature or planeswalker your opponent's control what x is the number of spell you've cast this turn Again, on the higher cost, um, keep that in mind. But yep, it's fine. Uh, and it allows you to do more damage when full. Great. And you just play this guy's hand. It's a classic. And uh, yeah, it, it does synergize also with the fact that you want stuff in graveyard. But um, yeah, other than that, I, I'd say that if you don't play too much of the graveyard, um, when full, you know, there are better ways to draw. Just to keep it at that. Goblin Electromancer. Great one. Instant sources spells you cast cost one generally you class to cast. It's a like 2 2 the cost is it so very very good in design third path iconoclast is a 2-1 human monk cost two whenever you cast a non-creature spell you get to create a soldier artifact creature token so again it's really 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 strange we went from prowess to creating token why <laughs> can you just do for more prowess or just like buffing creatures really well it makes not much sense again they're trying to do too much at once giving a lot of variety but i understand oh expressive iteration absolutely a great great one look at the top three cards of your library put one of them in your hand put one of them at the bottom of your library and extend one of them you know play the excel card this turn very 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 good i really like this card and it's a keep absolutely arcane signet you need the ramp absolutely is it signet very good soul ring oh that's a new one for the soul ring that's nice and um yeah next we have command tower of course temple of false god reliquary tower 
if you're drawing so many cards, that's really, really good. Then we have, is it Boiler Works? Okay, uh, which is one of those bounce lands. Then we have Propaganda Enchantment. Creatures can't attack unless they control pays two generic for each creature you could, they control that's attacking you. Now this is a good protection spell on your side. It allows you to say, hey, if you want to attack me, you're going to have to pay a lot. So be mindful of that. I like this spell overall, this enchantment. So it's not a bad one um, as a protection. Then we have 14 islands and 13 mountains. Okay, so what should we say about this deck overall? All right, well, again, the commander and the general want you to be casting spells as much as possible. They want prowess. They want you to, to at least hit that second spell each turn. But in general, these two cards really want you to storm out. This is what I believe this deck is all about, especially Stella. I think storming out is the way to go prowess is the way to go it's all about cheap spells or spells that get you into more spells casting and that's the name of the game now for some reason creature wise they've gone a little bit everywhere i like the fact that you have creatures that deal damage of course the ones that cost less are great but then you have creatures that either just buff itself um, or that create tokens and unless you're creating really good tokens and like for example the the beginning one or even tolerant which is great because and that gets you the flying tokens. Um, if you're just creating tokens, then it's not really the name of the game. You're not doing so much. And with those tokens either, you don't have invoke spells, you don't have any anything really significant um, to play. So because of that, you're gonna be very thin and the creatures. So for example, this one I will keep, of course it buffs itself, but it can become really strong and it has the trigger on casting sorceries and spells. Um, yeah, so you're gonna end up having um, maybe half of these cards. So this is five, this is five. Yeah, let's say a little less than half of these creatures that are really inconsequential. And other than that, the other ones are really good, but do you really think that this is the kind of creatures that you would put in this kind of deck? That is my question. The way that I will review it is the answer is no. Unfortunately, because you want more creatures that make my spells cast le cost less and more creatures that get prowess or that just get insane, insane buffs whenever I'm able to um to cast these spells and to be able to protect each other and all this stuff or allow me to play from the top of my deck to get more spells to 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 just do that like for example uh, plot more or so on and so forth now the other part of this is also the fact that a lot and i mean a lot of the sorceries are extremely expensive you have a lot of the good uh low cost ones let's see here so like these ones but then you start having x's and then seven and eights and you have one cascade but you know this kind of stuff here right that's really really expensive and you want to be casting as many spells as you can in the turn so i would keep as many of the low cost ones as you need a couple of the big ones and then just be careful how you choose and also keep in mind that as usual they've gone uh, you know jack of all trades with this deck and this is the the fault in the end of the any commander deck you'll find that the ones that don't really synergize so greatly are the ones that try and do too many things at once rather than focus on maybe two things or just one thing that the commander does really. so the other thing is as i was saying is the fact that you're playing a lot out of graveyard for certain cards that buff themselves or they're allowing you to cast some things so if you're playing delve cards and those those ones or if you're getting rid of your graveyard you can't really do both because you're gonna be hurting yourself more than you're hurting your opponents most of the time um and so that uh, of course there's the classics like brainstorm you'll want to brainstorm in here you know there are, there are a lot of other spells you can slice in that are the basis of a storm deck you know because this is really a great 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 storm commander i do believe that also yeah the artifact slot is kind of meh the forges foundry is really really good but then yeah you have like midnight clock and you're like why do i have the midnight clock <laughs> why is it here there are better better things Things I can do with my um, artifacts here and of course the lands are okay then you know the usual kind of stuff that you can get here I like the addition of the sulfur falls and the uh, sylvan reef but that's about it that's where my excitement ends and that 
that that's it that's it for the deck so i think i will review this as a 6.5 i love the idea i think the commander is very very strong i think there is some synergy and they did put quite a bit of the smaller cards in here so all you have to do is just synergize more with the creatures that you do get and uh, maybe interact a bit more with the board where's the damage where are the damage spells are you going to play seriously only the other big spells i don't believe so and if you are why not make them more cascade so that's why i'll give a 6.5 i'm tempted to give it a 6 but there are some positives here that I definitely would keep. Like for example, the Shark Typhoon and Arcane Bombardment are just, just amazing. These are where you want to have the higher costs in those enchantments. And maybe, as I said, maybe one or two of those big spells, especially if they allow you to cast other spells for free. Um, but other than that, I think that's it. As usual, this is the first deck that we review of the whole set. It, might be that we were a little bit harsher depending on and if so we will change the score at the end when we review the last deck but otherwise 6.5 is what it is so let us know in the comments down below if you agree with us or disagree or if you have any ideas on how to make this deck better and uh, we hope you've enjoyed it and um, if you did make sure to give a like and subscribe to the channel as it does help small channels like ours quite a lot and until the next one we wish you a lovely day a blessed day be good be kind and we'll see you in the next video bye